Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of floral coloured catfishes and they are known as plecos or whiptail catfishes or L numbers within the aquarium trade and the aquarium hobby. I've also worked in the aquarium hobby and trade and stuff like the, that. So today I'm going to review Dr. Bassler. So this is the bio fish food and this is the Fuko one but I'm going to talk about Bassler in general because what many people might not know is their diets don't actually differ that much. It's a very minimal percentage, like anywhere from sort of 8% to this is 0.8% uh, variation between the diets. Otherwise, they're largely the same. So this video will count for all. So Dr. Basler's diets, there's quite a di there's a wide range of products and that doesn't mean there's a wide range of ingredients. This one is Fuco, which is a, um, well it says here polysaccharide from a seaweed. So it only contains one ingredient from a seaweed um, and that's only 0.8%. So I'll discuss later with a, a little bit more into this. So this is one of their smaller pellets but they do have a diversity of pellet sizes for different fishes as most brands do. Um, it's quite easily accessible, at least in definitely the UK, um, Europe in general, so mainland Europe, definitely in the USA. So it's quite easy to get, and their whole range of different diets. They have some interesting ingredients, including a certain herb in one that's meant to calm down the fish. Uh, so that's why they're so popular. There is that diversity, I guess, and I guess somewhat of it is because people see it. It's one of those diets that is recommended a lot and easily seen but there might be a little bit more to it. So I don't actually own that many of them. I had a load of trial ones and this is the only large pot I had and if it gives you a clue this is the only pot I actually have. My main thing is that the fishes don't actually seem willing to eat on it. Um, my platies never did, none of these ever do. Um, I sometimes actually use it for African land snails uh, to make a, like a high protein diet for them. So that's why I've got it and that's why it is actually reasonably full. It doesn't help that it's smaller but most of my fishes can feed on smaller things if they wanted to. Like the discus will feed on smaller pellet sizes even if um, like they can feed on larger and they, I don't think they have any preference. So. There's a lot more to this diet, but I'm going to say that that the fishes don't eat on it isn't a major loss because there's no diversity in their ingredient list for any fishes and it's not a targeted ingredient list either. Oh, sorry, my L332, oh, L322, um, it's showing himself a little bit. He doesn't usually come out this far. Um, he's getting a little bit of confidence, I guess. But anyway... So that lack of diversity of diets means that there's not really anything catered for algivores. Uh, which me and if I want a carnivore diet, I don't really want that high amount of cereals, um, really, or vegetables. It's not. There's no real catering for different fishes. So I'll go into the ingredients because there's. It's not gonna like. Um, it's not really differing between the different diets, so this one video can kind of cover the whole thing. Um, there are, I guess, some interesting ingredients that could be looked at further in other diets. It's just that those main ingredients aren't of much use for the fishes I keep or want to keep or will keep. Which is quite a few, if you get what I mean. So that's kind of, a, it's not a diet I kind of wanted to review, but people have asked. Um, Actually, I might still have some trials lying around, but they'll probably be. They've all been exposed to air, so this is going to be quite degraded, especially uh, vitamin C and stuff like that degrades quite quickly when exposed to air. So, anyway, I'm going to show you the ingredients and we'll actually look at what's in this diet and why I don't really use it. So. This is the packaging at start. It's really nice packaging. It's very clear. I kind of like this sort of very professional looking packaging. This brand actually does, uh, so Aquarium Monster does some really weird herbal treatments. I'm going to say weird because obviously people love herbal treatments. 
but some of the ingredients are a bit like the science is a little bit iffy on but people like them because stuff like aloe vera um, really sells it looks fancy and stuff like that so got this um, packaging doesn't really suggest anything like the um, oh, uh, rainbow shark I can't give you the scientific name for them but they're, I guess they're more I'll give Algvorus, maybe a little bit more Detritivorus. They probably feed you a lot of insects in it. Here we have a butterfly fish. So it's really vague on what it's actually catering for, but it looks really nice. And I think that's always the thing about packaging. You do want nice professional packaging, but how much does that really matter? So bear in mind, these diets are recommended as like for health like for fish treatments, if you're treated fish with disease, they're often recommended to be used along the disease treatment, which I don't know. And it's not by vets they're recommended though, so it's a little bit of a difficult one because uh, there's kind of like the pathologist side and then there's the veterinary side. But anyway, so you can see this is the medium, medium pellet size, which if I give you, so that's like the size of the pellet, so medium is like, what's tiny? Tiny would be like, even smaller, yeah, it says, what's that, more than less than, I hate that sort of thing, but yeah, it'd be up to one centimetre, so that's really tiny fish, really, really tiny fish. So let's look at the ingredients, this is the main thing most people are going to be wanting to look at, and let's, please zoom and look, please let me, there we go. So, it explains what this ingredient is. So it's actually an ingredient from the seaweed. They're not putting the whole seaweed in. Oh, why is it not? It's not focusing quite as I like it. I'm just gonna try and, some people might not be able to read. There we go. So it's only got 0.8% of this ingredient. And I've not looked into Flucodan, which, um, of, uh, Fuko, Fukudan. But the problem is, is like when you have ingredients when it's just a pure ingredient, it could have a little bit more to it. Like that's maybe why that ingredient is limited, opposed to using the whole amount of seaweed, which is what you'd want if you're feeding an algivore or even a detritivore. If you're feeding an, a carnivore, maybe these ingredients they do might have small like um, nutritional benefits, but that. 0.8% would be more catering for that in theory but personally I'd rather have a diverse diet that's more precise to the certain fishes you're feeding so if we look at the composition here so this diet is re meant to be based on science and of course it is based on science but what science this is based on uh, sort of fishery science for feeding trout carp channel catfish that you're going to then fish out or you're going to eat. It's not for long-term fish care, it's not for reproduction of the fishes, it's not for colouration. This is literally, the science behind this is based on aquaculture. So hence why this ingredient list isn't vastly different from many of you are going to see. And a lot of people will hate on hikari. If I get up hikari and um, Pretty much, that ingredient list isn't wildly different. So uh, you've got the fish meal, you've got the cereals, you've got the fish meal here. Oh, I hate that. You've got the fish meal, then you've got the krill meal. So basically fish and fish derivatives of krill is obviously not. And then you've got the wheat, the corn, not the yeast. Here you've got the... So it's got the fish and fish derivatives, which could be any part of fish, of any fish. It could be the waste products. Firstly, most of our fishes we feed are not piscivores. They are, if they are carnivores, they are insectivores. Many of them, like, we do have quite a lot that are insectivores. So they're feeding on maybe um, other sort of invertebrates, so they're not. So that, a lot of the nutrition might not be as accessible. Oh my God video is not gonna go well with this. Let me zoom in a little bit. That might be better. There we go. 
And then, similar to Hikari, and it's not just Hikari, I've got um, uh, Aquarian here. Da, 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 da. And that's the same, you've got this fish meal, krill meal, cereals. Like, uh, cereals come in many different terms. Here we've got the cereals. And cereals can be, whether it's the wheat, whether it's the corn. I guess corn is a cereal, but there's so many different corn, um, cereal crops. Sometimes you have, like, I guess alfalfa, but cereal just can mean anything. What cereals are these? What's the quality of them? Crustaceans, well, that's a, a very broad group of invertebrates. That is, like, anything from insects, crabs, krill... Um, oh, blimey, um, isopods, I guess, uh, it's just such a gigantic group, and obviously we see that in many other foods, um, so here the krill is a type of crustacean anyway, it's high in volume, so if you're dealing with carnivore, generally the first ingredients are going to be the highest in um, volume, which is quite evident. So the uh, Hikari, and then we've got um, like I wouldn't say Aquarian has any apart from the krill, but you can see this ingredient list is pretty much the same. And if I went into say go outdoors or fishery store to buy ground bait to cut, catch carp, it will have this ingredient list in this order. Maybe if actually more fancy ingredients, because I've seen like blood uh, worm in higher volumes than this. Then it's got, um, was it, yeah, the crustaceans, derivatives of vegetable origin. What derivatives of what vegetables, which you'll see in almost every diet will have, um, which I guess could be soybean. So this is like, have a, needing glasses looking at this because it's really yeah soybean it depends what they count as a vegetable because some people count vegetables really broadly um, there's so much like um, and tetra has the same ingredient um, the exact same ingredient list as this really so if I get tetra which is going to have more focusing issues. So fish, fish and fish derivatives, protein, uh, protein from vegetables, cereals. Then it's got yeasts, which is the same as this, mollusks and crustaceans. This is not, if you're buying and wanting diversity of fish foods, and you're buying, say, each of those, are you really getting diversity when it's the same ingredients, usually in the same order, maybe the volumes are slightly different? And then we've got a yeast, that, so that's probably like brewer's yeast. Yes, that has a benefit. Um, and then we've got, so these are really high volumes of fish meal, so I uh, forget it when you're looking at um, algivores, detritivores, stuff like that. Um, yeast minerals is like, <laughs> Oh, minerals could be anything that I think that's partially trying to get away with you know when you see the because um, it doesn't list this ash content the actual mineral content oh no it does sorry that's about average mineral content I'd say fiber fats protein I think part of this is because they do talk a lot in their marketing about protein they're really keen on having a very high protein content and it's fine I guess the problem is is that very high protein is just going to be excreted as ammonia if it's beyond what they can process and that's probably what's going to happen if you're feeding this to anything that actually feeds on algae on um, even even say like hypensistrous and stuff like that most of that's going to be just ammonia but at least it's free of artificial colors <laughs> Um, loads of different additives, which is fine, loads of diets have that. Uh, we have like colour enhancer here, extensin, which is a type of carotene, uh, carotene, yeah, I guess. And then the main vitamins, trace elements, which aren't really much of interest. The main thing is that, so 
People do talk about binding agents. Binding agents are always useful in different diets, and some of these do act as binding agents. Fish and fish meal does act as a binding agent, or also does cereals and crustaceans, and vegetables can do too, which is great. So there's a limit when your argument is how much of it is binding um, agents. When so this is based on aquaculture and there's plenty of science to say that that doesn't work for most fishes that we're keeping in the aquarium um, and when we look at the diversity of diets that there is it only it's only like up to five percent algae which is pointless because that's really not enough algae for algivores there's no insect based foods for insectivores the nutrition is less accessible if they're not a um, uh, piscivore. So that's my argument for it and I know it's going to get a lot of people disliking it but you can't argue with that when you see every other brand with their same ingredient list and the fish feed on it and it might be a certain different price tag um, so take from that what you will and look at ingredients before you pay I would say or buy the product because I've spent a lot of money on fish foods before and I've looked in the ingredient list and I wish I never spent that money and I'd rather while part of the, my balance is having those diets isn't bad um, like if the fish aren't going to feed on it that's one thing but having the diets and them not um, I'm just gonna just so people are clear having the diets and them not being healthy for the fishes I'd rather not feed them that unless I'm trying to do something like bulk them out if I'm trying to do long term health then it's pointless having these diets and especially if it's going to last me a few years I don't want them having a few years of really not food that's not going to benefit them, food that's not designed for them, food that's not got any ingredients that even are close or even like a good amount of ingredients that are even close to what they're feeding on. And if we look at diets like other ones there's slightly, you're seeing sometimes a few more um, algae um, but I hope more than to bash a brand I want to see more diets actually looking at what fishes are feeding on in the wild and catering for that because at the end of the day the fish's welfare is best and avoiding things like liver, uh, fatty livers, avoiding cancers in fishes, getting the fishes living as long as possible, getting their reproductive lifespan. Fishes don't usually go through the menopause, or as far as we know, go through menopause like humans. So why are they reproductive for only half of their lifespan? That's not logical. And most of that sort of, if they're uh, even males, males shouldn't be infertile halfway through their lifespan maybe there's a sociality aspect but anyway so i end this here thank you for watching if you like my videos please comment like and subscribe and goodbye